We begin this hour with the emotional testimony unfolding on Capitol Hill today. That's right. The House Oversight and Reform Committee is holding a hearing on gun violence. Today's witnesses included family members of several victims killed in the recent wave of mass shootings across the U.S. The committee also heard testimony from 11-year-old Mia Cerillo. The fourth grader survived the massacre at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, by covering herself in her classmates' blood to appear dead to the gunman. Just let that sink in for a minute. During a pre-recorded interview, Mia recounted her next steps to remain safe, along with her fears of future school shootings. I'm on the teacher's phone and called 911. What did you tell 911? I told her that we need help and to send the police in, the, in our classroom. Right. Or things that you want different, what would it be? To have security. Do you feel safe at school? Why not? Because I don't want it to happen again. And you think it's going to happen again? Let's bring in Robin Lloyd for more on this. She's the managing director of Giffords, a group aimed at ending gun violence, and it was created by former Congresswoman Gabby Giffords. Robin, welcome. I mean, it's just so beyond heartbreaking, such an overused word now when we describe these sorts of, you know, school shootings, to listen to this 11-year-old saying she's too scared to go back to school. Um, I'd like to get your reaction to the emotional testimony we're hearing today at the House Oversight and Reform Committee's hearing on gun violence. Do you think that this hearing could bring about any change. It is so important that we hear from those impacted by gun violence. So hearing from the survivors of the Uvalde and Buffalo shootings, I think is hugely important. It's obviously very raw, very real. These shootings happened very recently. Um, and as you heard, um, people are scared and they wanna make sure this doesn't happen again. So it is really important that the House Oversight Committee is holding this hearing. It's important that they're hearing from um, victims and survivors of gun violence, and that they're hearing from policy experts about what we can do to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Robin, does this feel different to you this time? I mean, we heard the actor and Uvalde native mm -hmm. Matthew McConaughey say in the White House briefing room that it felt different. Um, but as someone who's worked on bipartisan efforts to pass stricter gun violence legislation, realistically, at this moment in time, when you look at the political dynamic, what steps need to be taken right now to put an end to this kind of wave of mass shootings? We have done this a lot, right? And we have not always been successful at the federal level, but I do think it is really telling that this week the House is gonna pass um, a slew of comprehensive pieces of legislation to address gun violence in this country. They've already taken up the mantle um, and the House led by Democrats has really uh, pushed an aggressive gun safety agenda, that is really important. But of course, the real action is in the Senate. And um, those negotiations led by Senator Murphy of Connecticut, um, I think are ongoing. And I think there is reason to be optimistic that we are going to see um, something come together. I uh, couldn't say what that is right now. I know the negotiations are happening in real time, but I, I think it's really important that if the senators can come together, if there is bipartisan agreement, even if it's not everything that we at Giffords or um, any gun safety advocate or activist across the country would want to see, I think it's really important that they do something, right? But we know... Oh, go ahead. Uh, sorry, no, Robin, I just wanted to ask you, like, at what point are we in danger of doing something that doesn't do anything? Like, in other words, at what point will the agreement be so toothless that it's just a piece of paper? I think it's really important to note that just because there might be incremental progress, progress doesn't mean it's toothless. You know, Washington doesn't move on a dime. Um, and so doing something, even if it's incremental, even if it's not everything we want, could still save lives. And that is by far the most important thing. So if there are policies that the Senate will consider or can consider that save lives, whether it has to do with extreme risk laws or policies related to domestic violence or the background check system. If we can strengthen those existing um, laws and create, make sure that there are fewer loopholes in those laws, that means lives will be saved. And I think that is absolutely worth doing. Um, Robin, that was going to be my question. I mean, I don't want to put you on the spot here, but for people who maybe haven't been following the debate before now, are there sort of one or two top priorities for you and your organization that you think would truly help to curb some of these mass shootings? There's a lot that can be done. 
no one gun law is going to prevent any active gun violence. Um, but some of the ideas that are being talked about absolutely will. The extreme risk laws piece is really important, and that's the idea that if somebody's in a moment of crisis, then they shouldn't have access to firearms for that moment. It is temporary, but that is absolutely something that could save lives and prevent mass shootings. Right. Um, if it's more broadly implemented across the country. Um, policies related to um, domestic violence, you know, I know that uh, people don't necessarily think of domestic violence as it relates to mass shootings, but there's absolutely a direct link. And oftentimes when we're talking about mass shootings, which is when um, four more people are killed, we are actually talking about domestic violence incidents. So um, there's a very strong connection there. And um, guns and domestic violence are very, very deadly um, a devastating mix. So mm -hmm. doing more on that front would absolutely have a huge impact. Um, and there's more that can be done um, on the background check system, as I said, and um, making sure that we stem the flow of illegal guns. And I think all of those things can and should be on the table when we think about what we can do. Um, but we're not just responding to mass shootings, we're responding to gun violence as it plays out every single day in this country. Uh, we're now at over 100 Americans dead every single day from gun violence in this right. country. That's a I think An it's important, you're hurt. making a really good point, though. It's important to not just talk about mass shootings and then school shootings. It's all gun violence. It's all related You're right. in every way that it plays out. Suicides, you know, the rest of it. Um, Robin Lloyd, thank you so much for joining us. We truly appreciate your perspective.